In 1962, the Australian government was offering an all expenses paid tour of a small Southeast Asian nation, Vietnam. Australia went to war. In 1963, Chris McLellan joined the Australian Army. He was 17. In 1965, at 19, he was deployed to Vietnam. He was uh, an infantryman, uh, he was a scout, and he was out in front of the troops, the first man. And they were five months into his tour, his place called Ben Ho, about 20 kilometres outside of Saigon. And he's walking through the jungle with his armour light rifle, and before him was a string, and he never saw it. And attached to that string was a grenade, and that grenade was in a can. And his rifles pushed the string, the grenades popped out of the can, and uh, then it's exploded behind him. He got shrapnel all, all up his back and his legs. And he's uh, very badly injured. He went to Butterworth and uh, in Malaysia, eventually was flown to there. And the doctor said to him there, he said, Chris, if your leg does not heal, we're going to have to cut it off. Fortunately, his leg healed. And he went back to Australia. And he continued on the Australian Army for three more years in various training units. But after his time in the Army, when he left, he burnt his uniform, he burnt all his documents, and he wanted to leave Vietnam and his army experience behind him. And the only thing he couldn't leave behind him was his problems. He suffered post-traumatic stress. He actually had a gun in his mouth one day and nearly got to pulling the trigger. But what did he do? He reached out for help, and he eventually became a police psychologist. And he counselled me, and he was the one who put me through the desensitisation treatment. And so this is the lesson I like to impart about Chris's story. Draw on your own experiences to help others. And that's what Chris did with me, and that's what I'm here today to try to, to help you and try to help destigmatize post traumatic stress. So I can guarantee you two things. It will help you. Some good coming out of bad is gold. Like it's been a horrific journey I've been on. I wouldn't want to go through it again, but I'm, uh, I'm trying to make some good out of that too. Trying to, if you experience something similar or one of your colleagues, try to make that journey a little bit easier. And this is very common. Dave stemmed and passed away at the untimely age of 47 in 2003. Heart attack at work. His wife, Karen, is the most loving relationship I've ever seen. She was completely devastated by it. And uh, it's taken her, you know, she's still, you know, to this day, you know, she's, you know I can honestly say that, you know, struggles, but she's getting better slowly. But what's she doing? She's been to America, and in America they have an association called the First Widows uh, Light Association. And it is to help young widows. And so she is uh, going to introduce uh, that organisation here to help other young widows. So if you use uh, your experiences and, and, and what you've been through, it'll help yourself. But you can also help other making some very bad life decisions. You can help somebody. You know, save their career, save their marriage. You simply might even save somebody's life. Brad Britton, he was the one who, you know, set the example of me to ask for help. And so he shared that experience, positive impact on me, and I was very fortunate to get treatment for post-traumatic stress very shortly after this incident. Some of the people in the room here today, you're going to have a four-leaf clover career. Uh, you just going to go through and be very fortunate and not be see too much, affected by too much, had too much you know, happen to you. Others, a bit more roll of the dice. It'll be a little bit more unfavourable. And then there's going to be others who are going to draw the shortest of short straws. Me, I was sworn in with 400 other officers. And my dad said, oh, I don't want you joining the copper's son because you might get shot in a domestic. Hey, what's the other that? One in 400. Yep, I drew the short straw. Fortunately, I'm still here today. And so, if you do draw that short straw, and you might attend a job like this, it cans murders, eight children. I defy anybody who was involved in that not to be affected, and I spoke to some of the officers. You've got the first responders. You've got the investors. You've got scenes of crime. It was in that house over a week, cataloging the dead bodies of eight children who have been stabbed to death. Horrific. And that could end up in manifesting itself in post-traumatic stress. 
Right? But there's help available. So when you hear this song, Dad and Denny saw the passing out parade at Puckapunyal. It was a long march from cadets. In the 6th Battalion was the next to tour. It was me who drew the card. We did Canungra, shoal water before we left. And Townsville lined the footpaths as we marched down to the quay. This clipping from the paper shows us young and strong and clean. And there's me in me slouch hat with me SLR and greens. God help me. I was only 19. When you hear that song, I hope it serves as a reminder of today and what I've spoken about. And a reminder that post-traumatic stress is real. That if you are suffering it, you're not alone. That there is help available and you can still go on to have a career and have a good life.